it's always a very great 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 it's always a very great pleasure <laughs> when the guests on my show have been friends for 10 20 30 and 40 years they are friends and we just chat and you the camera are there by the way one such example is today raj raj we go back goodness gracious me 40 years okay yeah 40 years Raj, you how Raj, old were you? Four years. I was 18, and you were 30. Now do the math. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Raj, we first talked to you. You, the singer. Yeah. Um, right. The savages. The sav- what was that era like when you first began? Well, I think the most. Um, what we did was we copied, uh, or so, sort of tried to copy the Beatles. Oh. The Beatles, yeah. There was a competition at the Savoy where the Beatles brought. What was the first movie that was there? Yeah. Anyway, there was a competition with bands who can perform Beatles songs well on before the movie. Okay. Okay. Oh wow! No, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. Okay. And we won the competition. Of course, there weren't a lot of bands. We, as in, who was in Savage. your band? Savage. Yeah. But oh. Why savage? Anyway, why 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 that was, name? Well, we used to call ourselves savages. Okay. We are carnivores. <laughs> Almost. I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, just looking for an unusual name. Okay. Uh, so you won the competition. We won it. Yeah. I I was uh, probably 15, 16 years old when that happened. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was 16. Yeah. Now you are best known as the silly, silly guy. You were silly, silly. No, no, Aya. no, no, no. That's no, no. much, much later. Okay, okay. Much later, no, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Now, how did how did that song take off? We used to go abroad and do all the playing in nightclubs, um, shows, and usually they were two-year contracts. Okay. and come back to sri lanka and pe- perform for the sri lankan crowd but what happened when he performed in sri lanka only the western oriented music used to come and listen to it. exactly okay small market right no? very small tiny i mean you take all the people who go to night clubs uh the shows few shows and you're talking of maybe 100,000 people who go out every night that's being very generous very very generous yeah So when I did one of the two tours in Switzerland, then when I came back, I was thought maybe I'll try something in Singapore. Did the album that was in uh, 1984. Did the album film it uh put it on the market. It was a video clip, right? Video clip. We we did uh, actually six songs. on the okay for that album uh the popular one became silly silly avan hale few 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 songs and then um, sold it sold it for i i i we did we had to do the selling also because the uh um, oh yeah because the outside people didn't know who raj and viratna singala sindhu kiyanda pulu one who make out the name make out the name okay. yeah so um I had a van, a salesperson, okay. a driver okay. who used to go around to drink Mali and all these okay. places, okay. make and see they, they never you buy bulk, okay? Yes. They buy like five cassettes, thing cassettes. This was cassette piece thing. Yes, no? cassette, cassette piece, piece thing. Okay. And when they come back to Colombo, already there's uh, news that uh, uh, Nuri Lee has run out of stock here. Yeah. So, so it was a complete circle. But there were two main people who sold uh, bulk cassettes in Sri Lanka. Okay. So, put it to them anyway, and um, for one year, okay. And in '85, we went to the States. To right. And. Um, I hadn't didn't know it was going on TV all the time. On uh, the it was a massive, massive hit. Yeah. yeah, I came back in '87 from the states, and it was still going on TV. 
Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Then it went again, came back again, and on every station, it ran for 17 years. That's what? 17 years. I'm not 17 kidding. years? Yes. That's on. That's a record. I know, I know. Holy shit. I know. So, I, I don't know why, maybe it was a visual, maybe it, it was... It was a nice story also. Story. It was, it was, and it, it, it touched families. Yeah. And the problem was, soon after doing Silly Silly, I started doing Western music again. Yes, I know. I'll tell you how Western music and singular music, how they are differentiated by the way you pronounce the words, okay? Okay. And a lot of people used to say, silly silly singhala tiyan ne me singhala harir danna thi kinek. Was that the charm of the song? I don't know. I think, well. Could have been. Could have been, could have been. I have no idea. But. They were saying, they were saying, kunato wagi singhala ucharan ya echara hundan le. Mandana, mandana. Wagi saan ke mera dek vidu hala kote hai ne de. No, at the. True. What color nah. the kettle black here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mage, uh, Singhala, Mage Amma, uh, Sri Lankan Navy. Ah, then you're excused. Ah, uh, no. Okay. Mage Amma, my mother, uh, was born in uh, India. Okay. Um, her maiden name, her maiden name was Mohani Indira Layal. Okay. Um, Northern India. Right. So you were excused. <laughs> no. So when my father had gone away and we were going to school, we had to teach our mother how to speak Sinhala. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. She okay. was a foreigner. Yeah. And um, I'll never forget one. She, was, she had gone next door to our place in Mount Lavinia. And um, uh, was talking and somebody came and said, Tuna paha kare avila servant. Okay, okay. Come next door and told her, Tuna paha kare avila. And my mother told that lady, three or four people have come to see me. I've got to go <laughs> next day. Tuna <laughs> paha kare avila. Oh, oh gosh. You oh. know what a Tuna paha yes, kare yes, yes, yes. Huh? The condiments guy. Yeah. And those, those days, they used to go, go to houses, okay? okay. Yeah. So now, that's how... Yeah, that's a nice story. Yeah. Now, when you were rehearsing and practicing, Sunil Pereira, who yeah. lived beyond in... Ratpalan. You were in Moratua. Yeah. The father stopped the car. Yeah, father used to bring them along. Nehal, Lal, uh, Sunil, Pial, uh, Nimal. Bring them along, saying that they're going to the Mount Lavinia Hotel for a swing. But they come and stop in front of our house and they listen to us really. Yeah, the five boys. Five guys. Yeah. Oh lovely. I know. And the father. Then we got friendly with them and take a break. And go out and speak with them. Now you sung with the likes of the Dalarines and the Minons and the Noelines. Uh, yeah. The girls of that era. Yeah. But um uh, the only girl that ever played for Savage was one called Heather James. I've heard of, yes. Ah, yes uh, that was just before we broke up. Just before. So what was it like performing out there in Vietnam overseas, uh, in a sense, with limited uh, uh, electronic facilities? I mean, all these synthesizers did not exist at that time. Well. But you performed well. Yeah. Listen. When you perform in places like Vietnam, where you do two shows for a day in different places, the equipment has to be light, okay? Okay, yes. Because you've got to carry the stuff from one place. Of course, the GIs used to come and help us. But um, the moment we stop the truck or lorry or something like that, they come, help us to carry the mic, mic speakers and all these things. And everything is set up within half an hour, or oh, wow. 15, 20 minutes, yeah. And the mics also are still fixed on the stand. Yes, yes, then you go yes. from place to place. 
And, um, Any unforget unforgettable memories you have yeah. of that era, which uh, does not exist now? Yeah. See, nice stories. Yeah, yeah. One, one, I'll tell you one. I remember Dongha. Dongha. Uh, see, at that age, I was 18 years old when we went to Vietnam. I must have been 19 by the time that happened. I remember... That's my daughter's age, though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Your daughter's age. I know. Uh, at that time, when you were working in camps, okay, you go and stay in camps, not hotels and stuff like that, uh, you hear the oh. sound of an outside attack coming in. Okay. And at that age, 18, 19 years old, Bunch you believe that, no, it can't come and strike me. It'll strike everybody else, not, not strike anybody. But I'm, it won't strike me, it won't come yet. I can hear it coming, hitting one of the places, and everything going bang. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. And so weren't you scared to die? I, I couldn't death die. Death was around I, you. I couldn't die, OK, at that age. I was confident that I couldn't die. Okay, one, once we were watching a, uh, a movie. After the second show, they throw a little party. <laughs> a party for us. And, um, and at this party, this, if, if, the, the, if it's a fancy club, they have a screen and show us a movie or something. Dirty Dozen. Mm. That was oh, the movie mm. I watched. Yeah. Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Yes. And watching it and then suddenly one of these attacks came in. Security. And everybody was running towards the bunker because you showed different bunkers in different places. And um, while everybody was running, I was just walking with my drinking hand or whatever. And we had to walk right through the nightclub to get to the bunker. And I could see these guys uh, sitting down outside and shivering, you know, and running. And then I went out and I saw one of those um, airplanes of uh, the forces being hit. I saw it being hit. And uh, I was thinking, my God, I'm, that was a few hundred yards away, a thousand yards away. And if it struck, came here, and I could see the bunker that these people are hiding in. And that's when I first ran into the bunker. So Raj lived <laughs> to tell the tale, and that brings sequence X to a close. We catch him on sequence Y, all about Raj, the composer, and his compositions. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To keep up with the pals of Sri Lanka, subscribe to our channel here. To watch our latest videos, click here and here. Keep living it.